Before I start, I guess I should thank Theodora, a, a, a recent listener. You said for five weeks you've been, uh, you've been uh, watching the videos. It's very nice that you've come around and uh, made a nice contribution. Uh, thank you very much. And this video is um, coming from a question from someone whose handle has the word mist in it, and I thought that was amusing. Uh, so much of what you do when you're developing student is, you know, you personally are coming out of the fog, you're coming out of the mist. <laughs> Things are, yeah, I think of it, I, when I was a student, I remember thinking of it as coming out of the dark. I mean, just like complete darkness. It's a very funny word, that uh, interesting word that human, the human race has used the word darkness for ignorance or for, or for unawareness, you know. Um, it's very interesting. But I remember having that experience right through uh, as I was a student, and I and I continually am looking for the darkness. You, you might say in my own life, uh, and 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 of course looking for the light is the uh, is the other end of it. One of the wonderful metaphors about the Boston School is this whole thing is based on a love of light, and uh, and uh, you know with so many of those um, um, ramifications by by way of metaphor. Uh, so what Mist asks, um, and is uh, kind of questions I, I really find fascinating, it shows that this person is really on the track of um, what we're doing. This is what I would call tracking, literally, the way we work. So uh, this is the kind of question you're going to go through and you're going to work out in your mind. Um, I, want you, I want to say this now, that what I say about this point here, uh, I want you to remember that the things you have to figure out for yourself when you're learning to see with your eyes and not work from measurements. Those things you work out, just go through them and look for better ones. Um, and uh, everything is susceptible of having some benefit. So I don't want to start here by suggesting that anything you're doing is even a little bit wrong. It's just that it's di there's a different mindset that you want to you'll eventually expand into, for bunches of reasons. Some of which are purely uh, the idea, you know, what, the difficulty of seeing <clears throat> without being in your instincts and in your intuitions and in your. Um, uh, and in your, uh, you know, what you call the music center <laughs> of your mind. But if you're not there, if you're, if you're there, if you're, if you're looking for that kind of music and that sort of beauty is summed up in that, you know, that what, what is that elusive thing? And, um, but, uh, but so is truth, actually. So what you're going to find is that, that it takes a different kind of a mind than a purely, than a purely, um, uh, uh, well, either a purely mechanical one or a, um, you know, and in that sense, a cold-blooded one. And yet it takes a certain amount of ab absolute cold-bloodedness, you know, like you really have to know what you're talking about. You have to see what you're seeing and actually objectively attain what you're looking at when we come to hitting the note or whatever, getting the truth in front of you. Well, you don't even know what I'm talking about, so let's read the question. <laughs> Mist asks, um, uh, when measuring relations of size, I have a habit of picturing a copy uh, of the smaller shape, and I can see how many times it goes into the larger. And that's a strictly a question of proportion, so the, then what do you do with that, right? So is this measuring in my head just as bad as using a device, or is this the way I'm supposed to grasp the relation of size? Well, I love those kinds of questions. This is absolutely working it through. This is, this is, what, the, this is what I would expect when somebody's beginning to, to work our way. Um, and, and I'll come back to this question. I have the feeling that proportion is a more abstract sense that applies not only to size, but the other visual phenomenon as well. And she's completely right. You see how she means that, that proportion, yeah, there's the proportion of intensity, right? There's a, just as surely as there's a proportion in size. And therefore, then, so, so, then, so, then, so when you grasp the relationship of angle or hue, does that feel the same in your head as when you grasp the relationship of size? A cool question. What an excellent question. And uh, I just congratulate you, Mist, for, for, for uh, staying on track. And, 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 and what you're going to find is the empowerment is just enormous. In my current way, I picture vertical alongside two other angles I see that, f that, feel, that feels different in my head compared to when I judge. Oh, that feels different in my head compared to when I judge the relationship of size. Yeah, so, yeah, angle, angle and size aren't the same thing. Uh, value is a different category of animal. So you're talking about darkest dark and lightest light. You won't measure those in the same way. There's no mechanical way to do that. 
Well, the, the one thing that's an easy mechanical way to measure is linear proportions. And so I'm talking about the, say, the, if the head is such and such a size, where does the nose land? Well, you actually could hold up a ruler with marks on it and just read where it lands on that marker, right? Uh, on that uh, set of marks. So have in mind that some things can actually be, be checked that way. But one of the things that actually prevents you from thinking that's the ideal way to work or that's, that you can find something like that that's reliable in every area is because some of these things are, are uh, like, how do you measure chroma? How do you measure intensity? Um, even if you could, I think you'd be missing a lot of the fun and you'd miss, be missing the opportunity to become more, more visually attuned to the music caused by the relationships that are perceived and felt. So, um, so let's go back to the very first part of our question. When measuring relations of size, I have a habit of picturing a copy of the smaller shapes uh, and I can see how many times it goes into the larger, <clears throat> smaller shape and see how many times it goes into the larger. Now, I'm gonna just look at uh, my interior, the one I show on my website. To, sh to show you what she's talking about as I perceive it, and uh, it isn't that difficult. So, <clears throat> so a size in a picture like this, you might be talking, say, about the size of that of that thing right there, and you can see how big that is. While you, now, I want I want I want myself to see how big it is when I'm looking at the hole. I want myself to see how big it is while I'm looking at this one. And so, if you if you want to, you can picture that into this. Does that is that four of those? But I find that pretty awkward. You can do that same thing with this block right here. You can see how big is that into this block. But what I, what I found, and, and so I wouldn't tell you, you can't do that. I would just suggest you might want to consider a different approach. And this is what the approach I take to everything. When Ang said, make sure you have a concept fixed in your mind and eye before, or you'd be pushing shapes around all day long, he could have said the same thing about, about uh, 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 mass units. Unless you have an idea of this thing fixed in your mind and eye, You'll be pushing sizes around all day long. Now, I've said to you before that we can actually, if we actually fi can fix this, shall we say with a ruler, we can see how many of these heights there are and for this total length. And we can do that the other way. But we're talking about felt sizes, masses. So this is mass relationships, mass size. So, um, so you take this whole thing here and you look at this whole thing and you wait. And this is where you have to become an observer with patience, right? We have to become an observer, but not an aggressive, not an aggressive one. You just have to keep waiting for those two to engage each other. And what you'll have to do a little bit is start doing, making sure you look with soft eyes. You'll have to do, you'll have to do um, uh, a little bit of blurring, uh, but just keep try to keep more of the whole, more of all this in your eye while you're looking at that. And before you know it, if you just close your eye, you'll say, oh, I think I have a feeling for that. And that's what we're looking for. Now, that, when you want to call that a concept, that's a concept. Uh, it's similar, by the way, a little tiny bit to what Gamow was talking about in memory training when he said, I, 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 I perceive that, that if I could have learned how to better do this, this thing, when you, you, you look at a shape and, and, and shut your eye and, and you see the indelibly the shape around it, uh, uh, you know, so in a blink, you just have this sensation of, of owning that shape. Well, it's not quite the same as that. So I don't want to, I don't want you to think it is. Um, uh, but what, what I well, just described there, though, that's the size of this while you're looking at this. Of course, your job in painting is to make sure the size of this is, is right to the size of this. Or, as I said, to the size of any other unit and how it feels while you're looking at the entire thing. So, so what is that, right? What is that thing? But in a spot like this, you know, in a, in, a, in a painting like this, how big this feels while you're looking at this is a huge thing. And, you, and I, I don't have a better way of doing it. I, you, I can't do this count thing about how many of these are there in this or, or how many of these would fit into this. It doesn't mean you shouldn't do those. You should do everything you can think of. But I simply have found it better to observe this and get a feeling. How does that feel while I'm looking at this? Or while I'm looking at this, I like the idea, of, by the way, of looking at similar types. So if I see an oval and looking at an oval, I try to get these ovals and I can just look at them. You know how it is, I've said before, it's like looking at your hand and seeing how big your thumb is with well, your hand sitting here. How big is that thumb thing? Uh, and 
what are you going to do? You're going to do that kind of calculus or you want to do this. You can get good, I should say, and I'm inviting you to get good at just looking at it and then looking at the hole and then holding it, holding your eyes shut just for a second while you retain the, the, that concept, okay? How they feel together is this huge thing. And you'll do that with every single size in this entire thing. How does this feel while you're looking at the hole? And the reason you do it is because eventually, ultimately, you care about the sizes. You have this to this to this to any other mass because they're all interrelated as which are similar at least they're interrelated and they have they have a rhythm in that in that set so that's one of the reasons I say you can look at a small oval and look at a big oval and get a feeling of how they go together but but sometimes you want to look at this one and this one and this one simultaneous to see, to see what the game simultaneously to see what the game is that that set that one two three is up to and you can see there's just really a difference, like going from flatter, more horizontal, to less horizontal, to, to vertical, or even left to vertical. And there you'll see that, you'll feel that. Now, those aren't things you can measure, and you'd even want, it'd be tedious to measure those if you could find a way to do it with rulers and sticks. But you can feel them. And all you have to do is make adjust, learn the, the art, sort of almost like, it's, it's really, it truly is like hitting color notes. The art is just learning how to adjust. You put down, you put down things like that, and you, and you just start, begin to adjust that part that's least like and you know there as i said there always have to be a decision about about a, an anchor an absolute one of these things uh for example you might say that that this this one here is fixed already and typically in a portrait i do i fix the head size i just decide so whatever's happening here is already fixed and so this size has to relate to that by size and then of course the rest of it is the tilt of this and the tilt of this and the tilt or any other kind of little set of groupings well i don't know of a way to do those in the way you're talking about in a linear way I want to use that word linear for a second because conceptual and linear are the two different kinds of thinking that are commonly talked about in the science of, the, of, of thinking, you know, problem solving and that sort of thing. So have in mind to become, if, that, if your strength is linear, like solving problems by first you do this, and then you do this, and then you do this, which I, by the way, personally not particularly good at. Uh, and even though in painting, by the way, we do have a systematic way, we do this first and that second, and that, you know, we have, we have a linear, linearity to our process. But it's all based on the capacity to, to have a concept. For example, when you, when you look at this whole design, can you, do you get a concept of the, uh, of the great, uh, 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 um, whatever that is, you know, the DNA symbol or something, or the hourglass? You just say an hourglass. If you, can, if you get a concept of how this feels like an hourglass, you know, you begin to be in that world a little bit. Uh, and, and that's the... And, and that's the kind of, and it takes a kind of imagination. I want to do an entire video on just the kind of things, and I think I've mentioned it before, the kind of things you have to be good at imagining to do our kind of painting. So I know I've gotten long-winded on this, but you can see where I'm going. I'll pick up your second question. But the first one was simply about the, um, about the sizes of obvious things like, like the nose. How big is the nose while you're looking at this? So the answer is you can do it mechanically, but if you stop seeing them and don't visualize them, and you use the word picture quite often in here, or at least you use it, at least more, you, you imply it more than once. But the idea of picturing it, that's what it is. You get, the, you get look at this and this until you can picture it, right? And that's all we mean by concept, to picture it. Now, how picturing do I mean? I mean, is that literally a picture? No, it's a, it's a picture of a concept. It's a picture of a size relationship concept, a feeling. So it's, isn't that a, it's a strange thing, right? But, <laughs> but this is the kind of stuff you can't truly write in books. I don't think you can. Maybe you can, but it takes a lot of pointing at things and that sort of stuff. Um, one of the reasons schools, I think, don't work like uh, a good atelier is because you're not going to have the same conversations, extended conversations, while you're painting. You know, so as they say, with a brush in your hand. So let's go back again to her question. When measuring relations of size, I have a habit of picturing a copy of the smaller shape, and and I can see how many times it goes into the larger. So that's what I call linearity, and it's not. It's, it's so you can see what I've said is a piece of the. It's a piece of the picture. It's perfectly fine, but but the other one is the one I use most heavily and that I go for constantly. So is this measuring in my head just as bad as using a device, or is this uh, the way I'm supposed to grasp the relationship of size? So I think I've. I think I've sent that to you, right? I think I've, is that, does that come across? And by the way, do, uh, Mist, come back and that gets you, get you more out of the Mist. Be more specific if I'm not clear, clear about something or you even send something or an image uh, with circles and marks or whatever you want it to uh, so I can actually see more clearly what you might be talking about. 
so then she says, I have the feeling that proportion is a more abstract, it is a more abstract sense that applies not only to size, but to other visual phenomena as well. Now that's the hugest point that she does get. She has a, what do you say, I have the feeling. Now look at that, here you are operating from feeling. Aren't you, isn't this good? I mean, this is exactly right. And here you only have that feeling that whatever. Now I'm just asking you to go ahead and operate from feeling when it comes to the proportion itself. You have to, you have to get, it has to be a sensed relationship, right? A sense. In other words, you have to see those two things and, 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 and get some ownership, right? So there's an internal, uh, what do you want to call it, a sort of a photography, an internal consciousness that happens. This is why you look four times every time you make a mark, because this is what's trying to come through to you, and you have to get very quiet. Those also serve who only stand and wait, right? Um, so, um, so when you grasp the relationship of angle or hue, does that feel the same in your head as when you grasp the relationship of size? And of course it doesn't, except in, one, in my sense it does. One of the things I've said from, right from the beginning is I didn't want to be this guy who had to click over to this and become that kind of thing to do this and another kind of guy to do that. Well, it's simply true that if you want to do some measuring, for example, if you want to do a device and measure and check an angle that you've already said, there are a few devices that work somewhat, but what the one thing that's common is that you don't want to use those except for checking. The one thing that's common is you want to be able to picture the angle in relation to vertical, for example, and angles in relation to each other and see what they're doing and get and have your brain go conscious, get yourself, you know, get that sensation right, right where you need it, right here, get that sensation of what that is and then close your eye and then and, and let it be for a second or two. And then when you go in to start painting, all you're doing is looking for that to show up that sense of the thing to show up, and it truly will, and over, over time. And then to whatever extent it doesn't, you don't, can't finish the job, there'll be other relationships that'll do that for you, and you'll do that. So you'll take that same spot, and you'll see it in relation to other, th other groups of things, and, which will finish the correcting. So you're talking, about, you're talking about a couple angles and looking at them together. Well, this angle can then go to a different set of angles, and, and by the time you've done that two or three times, you'll actually, that's our way of measuring. You'll have done... Um, um, uh, 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 conceptualizations of that angle as it relates to vertical, as it relates to angle, this one, to a set of angles, three or four, to a whole different set. And you can't possibly be wrong, especially if you're doing it based on beauty, because you have to get, they have to produce that same sensation, that same rhythm, that same, you see what I'm saying? And then, of course, remembering that the way we're working, you simply do get to and we're working from life. We're impressionists. We're working from life. So you do get this moment, then you can just blink at the model after you've done this and see, looking at the thing as a whole, is that getting closer? Is that, is that more like, right? You could just get to blink at the model. It's either on or off. It's just either you hit it or you didn't. And if you didn't, you, 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 you have to reconceive. You have to notice that, oh, yeah, the nose is still too big. So how do you, how do you, what do you go from there, right? So you have to uh, go back and say, well, and by the way, one of the things that people forget when they're doing this is they have to debrief. You have to make an attempt to get a relationship right on your canvas. Then you go back and stand back there and look at it and say, is that what I meant to say? Because a lot of times you just lose confidence if you don't go back and check and say, because frequently you can say, uh, you, can, you, can, you can easily see that you didn't get what you meant to say. Okay, you can easily self-correct before you ever go to that point of consulting the model again. Okay, so trust yourself that far, okay? Okay, so when you grasp the relationship of angle or hue, does that feel the same in your head as when you grasp the relationship of size? Uh, and so in my current way of, then my current way, I picture vertical alongside two other angles, I see. That feels in my head quite, uh, head compared to, different in my head, compared to when I judge the relationship of size. And that's exactly right, it will. But your methodology, conceptualizing with visual relationships, is not going to go anywhere. It's not going to change. So here's what she's talking about here. Say we have, let's say we have reds in this room here. Well, your job is, say, look at this red way over here. Your job is to see these, the, you, know, you want to see what that one's doing. You want to actually own that thing. But it's much in the proportional way. This is a chromatic, this is in a chromatic relationship to this one. It's in a value. It's in a value relationship to this one. And all you can do is, if you just take your sweet patience and just look at those into each other and just enjoy them into each other, and close your eye for a second, thinking, "I think I'll own that. I think I, I think I'll, get, I'll think I'll recognize that when I see it." 
you'll be in good shape. I keep saying it's like this person you just met, and you really do like them, you'd like to remember their face. You know you won't see them for a long time, so you look at them longer. You don't know what you're doing, but you're looking with, owner, with an attempt to get some ownership. And, you know, and at some point in the process of doing that, you close your eyes and think, okay, I'll remember them. And that's sort of, that really is not sort of, that's precisely what's happening here. Now, you can see things in that way. Uh, you can see, like, one of the difficulties of seeing these two is that they're different in value. So I used them because they were similar. They were heightened chroma, but they're different in value. So if you're, so there's this different thing you can do. You can look at these two. These are different in color and which is the most chromatic. And you can sort of, you can, but still, you just look at them. You're looking at that because you feel there's a chroma problem in one of them. You look at them to get an idea of what they're doing together chromatically. Now, what makes it different is that it's a different window. You know, value to value is different from hue to hue, which is different from chroma to chroma, which is different from angle to angle, which is different from box proportions, which is different from linear proportions. Just know which one you're talking about at any given time and don't confuse yourself by trying to get it, like the chair or the something, or don't give it a name like that because you, don't, you won't know which part of it you're talking about. So you're just talking about the, the visuals. You're just talking about the players visually. But yes, the, the, I'm making a long answer to what you offer uh, that could be answered in a very short way. And that is that there's a difference between uh, the, uh, the, 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 the way you can measure proportion. There's a difference between the proportion in line that you could check with a ruler and the difference in, in, uh, in uh, 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 mass proportion, which is much harder to correct with a ruler, which is different from value proportion from one to 10 on a scale. Although if you say that, you know, that helps a little bit. You can sometimes say that feels like it's a, you know, if you have a good picture of half, you can say that's the other, that's the, that's the light side of half from, from light to black, white to black. Uh, you can do things like that. Uh, so that becomes more linear. You can do that with chroma too, but I don't find much of that helpful. Uh, and you can do it with hue, you know. I mean, like, categorically, this, this up here, this area in, at large is the yellow of this picture, and then you'll see other yellow spotting around. And, um, and uh, you know, or this, or this might, you might say, or is the red of this picture, and then you see other reds spotting around the picture and all that sort of thing. But, yeah, get good at that and, and let yourself see that the differences between these things are all manageable in the, much the same way, which is, which is look at them and just let, let, give yourself, let yourself feel what they're doing together in relation to each other until you own it, until it comes to you, right? And if you're quiet, I mean, like, seriously quiet. I used to I think I've said it before on here. I, have, I actually wrote a poem about a fawn at the edge of the woods because that's what color felt like to me. It felt like you just look at that thing hard like you look at a line hard and you will not. It'll disappear. On you. Now, there are reasons for that that have to do with your eyes. But, but, uh, but no, I feel it's the same way with this. You can't look at, at uh, intensity differences uh, and color differences and have the same sense that you can measure. You can certainly say that this one is warmer than that one, you know. But it's not that. If you say this is warmer than that, that's nice to know. But your real problem is can you say that this and that one, when I look at them together, they do X and have a concept of that? Because that's what you're looking to do. Okay, Mist, thank you for that. And I see that you have two or three other ones out there, uh, uh, all of which are in, this, in the right direction. So, uh, and it was nice also to have uh, 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 Theodora, who was our who is our nice donor for today, uh, talk about how much he's trying to work on this. Um, this, is your, this is your way into the music, the music of painting, which is the whole point of it. So here I go again, right? What else have I got to sell? <laughs> uh, you know, hail to the Boston School, who wakes me up, who wakes us all up to the pleasure of beauty, the beauty of, 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 of light, of, of, uh, of color dance, you know, uh, and of the purely visual. So that is the music. And uh, now I'm saying, repeating myself. All right, guys. Uh, thank you again, Theodora. Thank you all for 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 sharing, donating, uh, 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 subscribing. Much appreciated. And this last set of comments, I really liked having that number out there. It was really good. If I don't get to you all, some of them are really much more video worthy. Not and but if you but if you're interested in having me talk about something, uh, I'm I'm eager to do it. That's what I'm, that's what I'm trying to do. But it's much like being a, a paint. Uh, critic in the studio, you know, it's a lot, I can, I can, I can carry, it's much easier to be specific about something or to isolate a point than to talk in generalities about painting. 
So if you have those kinds of points, this, is, this makes a better video for us. So don't hesitate to send them and don't be thinking even for a second that any of them are, are uh, uh, um, what's the right word for that, simplistic or juvenile, what would be the word for the child. You know, there's a bunch of people listening who are in the child category and uh, you might be helping one of them by speaking up. So, and, um, and for you guys who think, you know, have stuff that you, you find to be more complex, there's plenty of people listening who are into that world too, who've been painting for a while. So, and it's, and it's lovely having you all. It's really been great. So, all right, good. See you in the next one.